Well, hello there. Here I am again, Ray Mosholder, and uh, back to share more from the Book of Acts. We just tonight sent out the email to you that carries the message, the law, the end of the law, which was Acts 1, 19 through 26. And now we're going to talk about the birth of the church. Happy birthday to you. That's a song we sing here in America at birthday times. Well, happy birthday to the church. That's what Pentecost is all about. And uh, just before we go there, let me say that I had a question that was sent to me asking me what is, how many soldiers were in a legion, referring to what I taught on the last video. And uh, the answer is that 5,000 was a regular number, a usual number. However, depended on the land that the soldiers went to as apostles of the emperor in order to change the, the lifestyles of the people they'd conquered. And uh, if it was a smaller land, they wouldn't need 5,000 soldiers. So it, it, a legion could be of almost any size, um, but there weren't enough to be a mighty force in any of the conquered lands. So, <laughs> I got the question again. I was asked this quite a while ago, but I'll repeat the answer now. Somebody asked me about my hat. <laughs> In fact, the way that they wrote it was, why do you wear that silly hat? And uh, the answer is, is quite simple. It's 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 27. Because that's where we are told, that God tells us, Paul, Paul wrote it, it's the foolish things of God that confound the wise. And I, I can't think of anything more foolish than wearing this hat. <laughs> so I wear it everywhere I go in order to confound the wise. Now, truly, in 1 Corinthians one twenty seven, the word wise there is referring to people who think they're wise. Uh, atheists and agnostics and skeptics and uh, hedonists and people that hate the Bible and, and uh, hate the idea of God and just simply deny that he's there. I'm not going to look, I'm not going to look kind of thing. Um, <laughs> that's the wise. So I wear the hat to confound the wise. Now let's get into Pentecost. What a time. It's the birth of the church. And it's the time when law stops. Jesus fulfilled the law. That's why he, one of the reasons why he came. And he, after he fulfilled the law, the law no longer had the power. How did he fulfill it? He, he, everything said about the Messiah, he did, including going to the cross and dying for you and dying for me. He is the Messiah. And he rose from the dead. He conquered death and now gives life. And that more abundantly, John 10.10. 10. Now, Pentecost, the day when grace, carice, absolutely undeserved favor or kindness. I, I want to say again, Judas, had he died any time after when Jesus could, could save him uh, by, by giving him uh, a new heart, actually, putting the Holy Spirit inside him. There would have been no place where the devil could have come. But it was only because they were still under the law and Judas had the devil come into him, according to Scripture. And that's what brought him to the place of not only the thinking he was doing right and betraying Christ and kissing him so that the uh, Jewish people would know who he was and Actually, the Roman soldiers did, who would know who he was and arrest Jesus and take him to be crucified, scourged. By Christ's stripes, we are healed. And uh, this is the time. Judas died under the law. This is the time now. From this moment on, Acts chapter 2, verse 1. This is the time of grace. It is now too. I, I said to one of my brothers tonight, don't be too hard on people who fail. I've failed many times. 
I've failed so badly you'd almost think God would have kicked me out of the kingdom. But he didn't. He didn't. Why? Because I live under grace. Absolutely undeserved favor or kindness. Again, read Galatians 2. Or, yeah, Galatians 2, 20 and 21. And you'll see it so clearly. It's not I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Read Ephesians 2 and verses 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Not, and even the faith isn't of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we live under this that came on this holy day. The Jewish people thought of it as 50 days after Passover. That's what it was. And uh, the, it was Pentecost or Shabbat. And uh, this moment in history, uh, except for the second coming of Christ when he comes for the church, is the most dramatic moment in history up until then. And uh, it happens in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. Now, outside of the upper room where 120 men and women are gathered, and they are praying hard. They don't have a clue in the world what Jesus meant when he said in uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 49, it, it, wait in Jerusalem until power has come upon you. And then in Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses all over the world. Now, when that word power is used, it's the word dunamis. And I talked about that on the last video. I won't dwell on it except to say that that word power, oh my goodness, that wonder-working power in the blood, but also the power of the Holy Spirit in the baptism in the Holy Spirit, a totally unique experience. You get saved, you get water baptized, or you get baptized in the Holy Spirit first, and then water baptized, but those three things are so essential to the fullness of your joy in Christ. So essential to your miracle power in Christ. Because the same miracle power that was poured up, out upon those people is poured out on anyone who receives the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'll never forget the transformation it made in me. I was in love with Jesus. I'd been saved. I thought this was the highest point I could ever get. And four months later, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And when that happened, all heaven broke loose. And it has broken loose ever since. I began to pray in tongues when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was four o'clock in the morning in my car. And an exciting, wonderful, spiritual miracle had taken place where people who had no idea of truths in the Bible had suddenly been ministered to in a way that set them so free that they stayed from 8 o'clock at night till 4 o'clock in the morning just saying, more, more, more. And I had been turning in the Bible and turning to verses I didn't even know were there. I was being supernaturally led, and it dawned on me that that was happening. But I, I just kept going. At 4 o'clock in the morning, the people left this house where, I, where they had gathered. They were all praising God. And I went out and got into my Volkswagen. I'd never spoken in tongues in my life. I'd been taught that speaking in tongues was of the devil. I'd also been taught that the baptism of the Holy Spirit was only for the first century. And I got into my car and I'm so excited over what I've just seen. People coming to Christ who I'd never planned to. And people touched by God in a miraculous way, and I get into the car, and, and I started up, and I started driving, and I started praising God because I was so full of joy. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Thank you for how you touched those people, how you allowed me to be used to give them the word. And all of a sudden, as I was saying that, 
And I began to pray in tongues. And I had never expected to. And as I prayed that way, <laughs> I then stopped because of the teaching that I'd had that was against it. And I said to the Lord, Lord, if this isn't from you, turn it off. But if it is from you, turn it on I. And I suddenly burst forth by choice, but knowing that God was the power behind it, I burst forth in tongues. And I have prayed in tongues ever since. And I tell you, if you're not doing that every day, you're missing mighty miracles of God, mighty blessings of God. Spend time worshiping Jesus. Oh, God, I love my Sunday. It all happened. It all began here at Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. This is describing the 120 men and women praying to God, saying, I don't know what this thing about the power of God coming on us means, but we want it. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise. Now notice that it was the noise that was heard. It was not, it, 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 well, I'll read it. Suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Not wind. Where the, the, the furniture wasn't all blowing over. People weren't falling on the ground because they were blown down. This was not a hurricane. This was not a cyclone. This was not a tornado. This was not a tsunami. This was a noise. This sounded like a violent rushing wind. And it filled the whole house. The sound filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them, and by the way, let me say that they were sitting. You know, you get a kind of an idea that you have to be on your knees all the time to pray. Well, that wasn't what they were doing here. They were sitting when they received baptism of the Holy Spirit. They were praying, but they were probably comfortably seated. God isn't against you being.